<laughs> that is not correct. Syndra, the one that nukes. No, not that one. Syndra, lots of balls. Nah, too much oomph to that one. Syndra, the destructive mage. Yeah, that's a good one. That sounds a lot better. Syndra has been in the limelight of League of Legends competitive play for a very long time. Ever since I started watching the LCS back in season four, Syndra has always been a competitive pick and is routinely in and out of the meta. Nearly all professional mid laners are proficient with this champion and you can't say that about a lot of them. She brings so much to the table and when playing correctly, can really blossom into a hyper carry. Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy Snowda. Please subscribe to the channel and also drop a like if you enjoyed this video. If you guys wanna interact with me outside of YouTube and discuss some of the things I talk about in this video, then go follow me on Twitter. All right, now let's talk about Syndra. One of the first champions I talked about on this channel was Victor, but unlike Victor, Syndra doesn't need the time or the location to set up great plays. She can unleash it at any moment, and that's what makes her so scary. She is a glass cannon. Usually you would call a squishy ADC a glass cannon like Kogma or Vayne, but I really think that Syndra fits into this mold as well. She unleashes some of the highest burst damage in the game, but also has CC and sustained damage. Syndra is always one of the top mid laners in my rotation when I am climbing on my main account, and I have no reason to believe that I will treat her any differently in the future. Although I think Syndra is a very well-rounded champion, there are always weaknesses attached to strengths. So let's go through those right now. Something I briefly noticed in my last game with Syndra is that she is really darn slow. In the late game with Sork Boots, she only has around 375 movement speed. Now, this isn't awful, but when compared to the high mobility champions that have flooded the meta recently, this is not the best position for her to be in. You have to be over careful in your games not to extend or get out of position because you'll get punished, especially if you don't have flash. This ties into the next thing that is weak about Syndra, and that is her susceptibility to assassins and champions who can dive the backline. After she uses her E, she's out of self-peel and relies heavily on her teammate to peel her. I guess she could just one-shot that champion, but if she's behind or fails her combo, then she doesn't have anything to get her out of that situation. This is not the best thing in solo queue because without voice comms, it is hard to rely on your teammates to peel you. However, this is not the worst thing to overcome. If you pay attention to the enemy team comp and you understand the strengths and weaknesses of their abilities throughout the game, you can likely think your way to victory. And by thinking your way to victory, I'm talking about buying stopwatches when you need to, knowing when to shove and when to back off, or maybe even knowing when you should should and shouldn't split push. One thing that I did want to mention that I don't love about Syndra, which really isn't a weakness or a bad thing, is that her high damage, unless you are super fed, is usually only targeted at one person. And once she pops her ultimate, her kit is significantly weaker. In late game team fights, this can be pretty dangerous. If you don't kill someone with your ults or offer utility to your team, then you don't really supply much in the very late game. By this point, ADCs have scaled to a point where they are almost unkillable if played properly, and they can out damage an entire team. In these situations you can't dive the backline and kill the ADC. Thankfully, this isn't usually a normal occurrence, and if you get ahead of Syndra, you'll have a large advantage to take all of the neutral objectives, which would usually snowball into a win, or you'll just end up tilting the opposing team off the face of the planet and get an early FF. That I don't like is Syndra's early game. Syndra was a very meta champion around season five and got a decent nerf in season five or six. I, honestly, I'm too lazy to go back and look, but I'm pretty sure it was somewhere in this two year time span. This nerf decreased Syndra's early numbers on her Q. Before the patch, Syndra could take massive trades level one and leave with an HP advantage. She was able to mix in auto attacks with multiple Qs and out trade almost all mid laners. Now, Syndra is left with a Q that does about half the damage that it used to, rendering her early trades almost useless. Damaging your laner with Q just tickles them and unless paired with a couple of auto attacks, doesn't really do any damage and is kind of useless. They haven't done anything to buff her Q in a long time. So even if you play the early levels really well, you aren't necessarily rewarded as much as I'd like you to be. The second thing I don't love about Syndra is her W. Her other three abilities abilities mesh together so well that it kind of overshadows this ability. Syndra's W picks up a ball and then drops it wherever she clicks. This sounds great in theory, but in reality it is hard to pick up an enemy minion or ball in the mid lane and then drop it in time to slow. The damage in slow radius is way too small for how long it takes and it's kind of clunky. There's also been times where I've gotten caught out of position trying to pick up something and then I end up just dying. For a champion that is very smooth to play, this ability just seems kind of out of place. An aspect to her W that they removed from the game recently that 
I thought tied her kit together really well was that her W could pick up multiple balls at the same time. This isn't in the game anymore, so I'm not going to touch on it for very long, but this really tied together her ability to pick up balls from her ultimate and then combo it into her E. You can still do it with a combo that I'll talk about later in this video, but I kind of just liked how everything meshed together a lot better. There is one situation that I do enjoy using her W, and that's to pick up blue buff and secure it with a Q that is outside of the blue buff pit, and that's if like you're far ahead and your jungler's taking it, so you just got to steal it from your own team, or you just want to secure it from the enemy team. Whatever happens, being able to move those neutral monsters really helps occasionally. When you use Syndra's quick combo, casting her W can take as much time as it takes to cast all of the other abilities together. It does have a slow and allows for more sustained damage throughout a team fight, but other than that, it's pretty useless besides being able to pick up the enemy blue buff, and that's kind of the only way that I use this ability. Plus, I max it last, so it doesn't really matter anyway. All right, now let's talk about the stuff that I really enjoy about Syndra and the things that I really like about her kit. Yeah, why is he so tanky? Okay, back up. Uh, set him. Oh, I'm dead. Dang nice. it! That was my quadra. Uh, just get the I'm sure that most of the people watching this video have experienced what it's like to get ulted by Syndra. To say the least, it's a very hopeless feeling. When you see her gathering her balls and then they start flying at you, you just feel so helpless. You know you're about to die. On the other side though, playing as Syndra, this might be one of the most satisfying experiences in League. You know with certainty that you're gonna kill someone. Just like how ADCs have started to build stopwatch for Zed, the same is true with Syndra. She forces her opponents to itemize against her. This is great for two reasons. The first is that if they don't buy items to counter her, then she will continue to stomp and wipe the floor with them. But if they are smart enough to buy them, they're going out of their way to spend gold on items that don't increase their damage. That allows your team to be more useful in winning the game because your presence alone forces them to spend gold in places they otherwise wouldn't. Syndra's ultimate is surprisingly powerful. Everyone knows that she's a one-shotting machine, but it is still deceiving how much damage she does. I've been playing in high plat low diamond recently and even at that elo players aren't respecting her damage and are walking way too far up. A lot of the gameplay in the background is from a game that I went on an absolute tear. I didn't start out the game too hot but I fought my way back into the game and started one-shotting everyone. Something that has always bothered me about control mages was their immobility. They are susceptible to getting ganked and getting hit by skill shots. And although Syndra has a pretty low base move speed, which we'll talk about later, she can still cast her Q while moving. Other champions would pause in the spot that they would cast their ability, but Syndra continues to move through her animation. Now, this isn't a game-changing advantage, but it really helps her dodge and win trades during the laning phase. Earlier, I mentioned that her Q damage in the early game is something to be laughed at, but it is no joke being able to cast your abilities while also dodging other abilities at the same time. This is especially useful in the later stages of the game when you need to kite enemy. You can keep running away while popping Q and every once in a while drop a slow or a stun with her other abilities. Another thing that is great about Syndra that I've only seen a couple of times is using her ultimate as a massive stun. Faker had this great play in the LCK where he ulted an enemy champion and then flashed over a wall to use his E. This sent multiple Syndra balls into his enemy stunning and killing them. This is great for team fights and if you're behind and can't one shot any of their carries then this offers some great utility to the rest of the team. Even if you are fed this can sometimes be better than using your ultimate ultimate as a nuke. You still get all of the damage from your ultimate down, but instead of using one Q to stun, you can use three to five balls to stun, which can massively change the direction of a team fight. Being able to use this well will separate the novice Syndras from the best. She has such a high skill ceiling, and this is not the only move that can make her lethal to play against. Another thing that I like about Syndra is just her champion design. I know some of the new champions are just bonkers and honestly have way too much movement and insane abilities because Red is running out of ideas, but Syndra was pretty ahead of her time when she came out. Instead of having a couple of basic abilities and then an ultimate, everything in her kit is based around her passive balls. Her Q drops a ball when it is cast, her W picks one up, and her E shoves it around. And then her ultimate kind of just throws three to five balls at people depending on how many there are on the ground. This is very unique and one of the reasons that she is so fun to play. There are so many different combos and interactions with her balls that makes every game new and enjoyable. The top players in the games and with are those that understand her kill potential at all stages of the game while also having a comprehensive plan on how to use 
use her balls most effectively when fighting. Syndra is a relatively strong laner for a lot of reasons. I kind of want to recap a couple of the reasons why Syndra is such a strong laner. She is so strong because of her ability to cast Q while moving, but even more than that, she has the ability to set up ganks for her jungler with her stun and even get solo kills with her ultimate. Her kit allows her to control the wave very well as well. She can pull the wave and freeze it while zoning the enemy with her high kill threat. She also has a lot of wave clear and potential to push with her basic abilities. In cases that she is pushed to her tower, she can still farm very easily by grabbing minions with her W to save them from dying to her tower. Syndra is known for one-shotting people with her ultimate, but something that is even more fun is not having to use her ultimate when you are so far ahead. There have been games when I was so fed and didn't even have to cast my ultimate at the end of the game because my basic combo did enough by itself to kill people. I'm going to make a video soon about Kasten and how polarizing he has been in the competitive meta for years, but I realized that I would much rather play Syndra in solo queue than Kasten because with Kasten, you have to wait to scale up. Yeah, you might be one of the scariest champions at level 16, but it takes forever to get there. I want to climb as fast as possible, so I take into account game time, and in my opinion, it is easier to win faster with Syndra than late game scaling champions like Kasten. For those of you who care and want the housekeeping stuff like runes and build, here are the runes that I've been taking with Syndra recently. They're pretty cut and dry for mages there's nothing really crazy here, but I do want to mention one thing when it comes to her build. This is a classic six item build for Syndra, but after you get Luden's Echo, you should buy the Orb and Morella Namicon, but wait to upgrade it later because upgrading it to a full Morello is very cost inefficient. You are better off building into a Zhonya's or Death Cap and then for your fifth or sixth item, you can finish Morello's. However, this comes with a caveat. If the opposing team has a lot of healing, then you should finish it earlier rather than later. Guys, that is it. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Like I said earlier, follow me on Twitter. The link is in the description below. Also, please subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get 1K subscribers in the next couple of months. That'd be awesome if I could get your help. As always, this has been Snowda. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.